Hey, brother. So guess what I did last night? I saw a bunch of turtles get laid. Is everybody seeing the eggs falling? As eggs, Ben, come on, get your mind out of the gutter. So Ben, last night we went on a turtle walk and it was awesome. Turtle walk is when you go on a walk down the beach and look for turtles who are giving birth and then you get to watch. Them. Can you imagine if we did this for humans? Oh, and in this room it looks like Mrs. Jones is having twins. All right, bring the tour group in. Ben, so we learned a whole lot about sea turtles last night. Like for one thing, a single turtle might come to shore three to four times a summer to lay eggs and lay over a hundred eggs a time. That's so many eggs. Not only did we get to see a turtle laying the eggs, we got to see hatchlings going into the ocean. Those are baby loggerheads. Just so show you the side. This was a very rare treat where the biologists had collected the hatchlings from a nest that had been damaged earlier that day and then they released them. This happens like once, maybe a year. We got to see it! Booyah! I also learned that all adult turtles are incredibly lucky. The statistic is 1 in 1,000 hatchlings will become a full adult sea turtle. That means the entire adult sea turtle race has survived one in a thousand odds. Ben, I've always kind of been fascinated by luck and if it's like an actual force or not. In college, I wrote a short story about a guy named Carl who, unfortunately for him, was the luckiest man on earth. Everything in Carl's life went exactly the way he wanted it to, but he could never enjoy any of it because he'd never experienced the conflict of not succeeding. Yeah, it was one of those stories. So I guess the argument is, are some people genuinely more lucky, like good things happen to them because they're lucky? Or is someone just considered lucky because inevitably somebody has to be the person who the most good things happen to. I've heard the phrase, a real man makes his own luck, and before I go any further, it's not what I'm talking about here. I do think you can definitely put yourself in a position where better things are more likely to happen. What I'm talking about, though, is just fortunate coincidences. For example, brother, you may recall several, several, several summers ago when we were driving up to Vermont, the very trip you're on now, and my car broke down and the whole family was stranded in New York for three days. When mom and dad took my car to the shop, they went and got lunch and they bought a scratch ticket just because, hey, nothing could really get much worse, right? Well, they won $500 on the scratch ticket. That's just unheard of good luck at just the right moment. It's so cool. And speaking of Vermont, it doesn't sound like you're having a whole lot of good luck up there. What is this nonsense about beating a fish with a rock and bacon in the oven? I've got a couple of major problems with that. Number one, you're baking bacon, not frying it. Number two, that griddle, yes, I know that griddle. Of course I know that griddle. The best breakfast in the entire world comes off that griddle. Do you use anything else at camp to cook bacon, especially that oven, the oven that has been there since the beginning of time? Force the tradition, we are doing it right. <sighs> All right, back to my topic. Imagine you have a drawing between 100 people. You draw one name out of a hat, boom, winner. Repeat the same experiment 99 more times until you've got 100 winners. Draw a name out of a hat, boom, you have some guy who's won the drawing twice. Now, do this whole experiment 98 more times. Yeah, it's gonna take a while, there's no doubt. But eventually you will have 100 people who have won 100 drawings in a row. Draw a winner. Boom, that guy has got to be like the luckiest person ever, right? Does he? See, in that scenario, we've created something where we're forcing a winner out of it. Does luck actually favor him, or was he just the person who inevitably had to win that drawing? So that would be probability working itself to an inevitable winner. Now, on the other side of things, imagine you have 100 people in a room, 101 prizes, and you start drawing names to win. Every time you draw a name, he goes back into the hat to be entered again. Now in a perfect world, 99 people would walk away with one prize and one person would walk away with two. But I bet that's not what would happen. I bet at least a few people would walk away with nothing. Some people would walk away with two, maybe three or four things. Are those people actually luckier than the people who didn't get anything? I'm sure there's someone who's much better at math who can figure this out, but I don't know them. So, you know, if you're out there. So Ben, my big philosophical question for you and everyone else is, are you lucky because you win the lottery or do you win the lottery because you're lucky? Oh, also notice in the comments from your video yesterday, Ben, awesome girl 580 brings up an excellent question. Did Kayla jump off the cliff? We wanna know. Anyway, Ben, good luck with breakfast tomorrow. I'll see you in another life, brother.